One, two, one, two, one, two. You've heard ha, 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 and ho, ho, ho. Musician's friend is the way to go. If you want to call it a BFG, Billy F. Gibbons sound, and how do you get there? Try and play toward what you want to hear. We're here at the Marshall booth with Slash, and Slash, it's always great to see you. And your history and your allegiance with Marshall is, is well known. Can you tell us what attracted you about the company at first and why you've stayed with him? Well, I think, I think a Marshall was the piece of gear that all kids aspire to who want to play hard rock guitar, you know. And my dad comes running out of his bedroom in his underwear, and he's like, what the hell is going on in here? And I said, dude, I want to be a tuba player. Check it out. And he's like, no, you're not, son. And he went straight to his room, put his clothes on, comes back, and he goes, get in the car with me. We're going up to see your band director. You're going to play the drums. Changed me over to the drums, and then the very next day when I started in drums, I was like, oh, thank God, man. So my dad changed the course of heavy metal. One of the moments that really struck me is when I was playing with George Harrison and I, I just said, wait, I'm playing with a Beatle, <laughs> you know. When George Harrison was alive, he was a dear friend. He used to, every time I'd go to England, he'd send a car for me and go out to the house and stay there. And, uh, and it was just unbelievable. He had a wall of guitars and he said, oh yeah, I used that on Revolver. That was the solo for um, something. Here comes the sun, that, that guitar, you know, it was just like, I'm going. You're kidding. You know. Do you feel like we do now? Yeah. Uh, Pete Drake sort of refined it and sh showed me on a George Harrison session for All Things Must Pass is where I first saw one. There he is in a slow moment and he gets out his little box and his pipe and he starts singing words through and the pedal steel starts singing to me, which was, that was like, you know, completely jaw-dropping. So I said, that's the sound, I want that. You look at some of the things that you're singing, like anarchy, how can I be an anarchist when I'm driving a Mercedes? You know, plus I'm a Christian, I'm not gonna say I'm an antichrist. I would never do that anymore. Uh, touring as much as Megadeth does, especially in a lot of the places that we go to that other bands just don't go. Just going into Colombia and finding out that people are getting kidnapped and having things put on their neck and if they don't pay the ransom, their head explodes. We go to play there. <laughs> I didn't want to be, you know, the guy playing the same guitar as everyone else does. So I like to do something different to stick out a little bit. I'm gonna just play a, a Telecaster, you know, for like these heavy rock. I was playing a Telecaster in Marilyn Manson, and that's like, you know, wearing a cowboy hat at a Slayer concert or something. You know, you just don't do it. This is one of the new signatures. That it actually is the first one ever made. I spend way too much time working on my gear, <laughs> no <laughs> trying to get the tone. You know, it's like, I don't know what it is with you know, electric guitars, like, ah, you know, because you, you listen to like a nice piano or violin, and it's like, I got this sound, and so I, you know, run in here and try to make the guitar sound decent, you know. What kind of pedals do you use, Henry? I use a Two Screamer TS9 a box wah pedal. Are you sure it's a Two Screamer TS9? Is, is that a. Is that a Hardware. I don't know, we lost one. Yeah. We're trying to do an interview. We're trying to do an interview, people! It's proven over and over again that it's the musician, you know? It's your sound, or maybe you don't have a sound and you're making noise. <laughs> So there's your signature Joe Satriani sound, which is very important to me, of course. <laughs> I need that. Well, those are great. Would you get those at Barney's? Uh, I'm not interested the needless Marco. It's yeah. good. I gotta say, there's a little wolf barrel going on here. I'll make you a face, Will. I'll tell you what, the shelf business ain't all cracked up to be an old sign. I'm the 
Rev from Avenger Sevenfold. I play the drums. Uh, we've been playing for about 10 years, and I play uh, DW drums. What all this is to me, this is all just stewardship of your life. It's all just taking care of those things that God gave you and turning them into something, and then in the end being able to give back to people and to know that if they had an encounter with me, that it was a positive one. How you guys doing? I'm Josh Maloney. We're here at Dean Guitars. I'm going to give you a custom, one-of-a-kind, virtual tour through our Dean USA custom wood shops. Well, I made my first guitars when I was just a kid, you know, 16 years old, and I hadn't really heard of any other guitars. Never seen a Martin, hadn't seen a Gibson, hadn't really heard of those, and so, you know, the guitars that I made when I was a kid were really my ideas. And a lot of people might get into guitar making from being a repairman for 20 years, whereas I got into guitar making as, as an original pursuit. I've never been a guitar repairman. I've only been a guitar builder. You know, music is all about passion. With PB, we've been in business now since 1965, and the passion is still there. We've been very fortunate to have 43 years to evolve under the same ownership and management. We have amassed all this experience, and experience sometimes doesn't teach you what to do, but it kind of teaches you what not to do. I love playing music and these are tools to play music on. That's all they are, really. It's an art form. I mean, it's an art form how you carve the neck. It's an art form how you do the inlay work, what the inlay design is, um, wh what the headstock shape is, how you do the tuning pegs, even putting truss rods in or staining or picking wood grade out or doing the joint down the middle or any of that. It's all art form stuff. I think my colleagues who work here find it very inspirational to be able to say to themselves and to anybody that asks, I work for a company that makes the best of its kind. I don't work for a company that's making a commodity. I don't work for a company that's making a copy of somebody else's thing that's really good. I work for a company that makes something that is world-renowned as the best example of that thing on earth.